I'm sorry, I just, I just wanted to give another end to this movie. I don't know about you, but I don't like the ending. And what I like sometimes is I watch television, I go to the movies, and I turn off the sound. And I invent the story. And I, I usually make better stories than these crazy people did when they wrote the script. And I'm suggesting that you do that with your life today. Rewrite the script. Don't believe what people tell you to do. Don't believe what people tell you that you are. Uh, you can change everything. And that's the message that I have for you today. And the way to do that is up. Up. Up is a very key, strong, simple element. Right? You don't want to go down. You want to go up. Why? Because this is our reptilian program. And when I say reptilian, I mean the reptilian brain, the old brain, right? Nobody has to tell you to get up in the morning. And if you don't, you are in trouble, right? We have to go up. We want to climb. We want to go have the tallest building in the world. Uh, you know, we're never going up enough. After the moon, we want to go to Mars. We, where that come from? Maybe it just started with a little snake that didn't want to stay a snake and wanted to have legs. And then after legs, it become a lizard, they wanted to fly. I mean, mankind have always wanted to fly. You know Icarus, Icarus, the mythology there? And I work for Boeing, and guess what? We fly. We fly all the time. I fly all the time. I spend more time in airplane than in my bed, right? So I'm a new species. I fly all the time. So we, come, we started very low, and then we start climbing, and we move up. So I want to tell you a little story. <clears throat> I was born during the war, 1941, so the, the, the last war in France that we had. And, you know, I was, my father was a prisoner, my grandfather was a prisoner, I was with my mother, and we were staying in, in the cave, in the basement of the house, to try not to be killed by the bombs. And I wanted to go out, play. And my mother said, no, stay down, stay here. Just have to wait for the bomb to stop. And so, you know, I start listening to the airplanes. And when I couldn't hear any bomb, I say, my mother, can I go up? Up. That was my first imprint. No bomb, I could go up and play. But then when the planes arrive again, they were usually American planes, by the way, they start destroying everything, so I, I had to go down again. And my imprint, my first imprint, my first reference system, that when I go up, I can play. When I go down, I cannot anymore. I have to survive over there. So the whole notion here was very imprinted to me, and from the very beginning, I just wanted to get out of this box, whatever the box is. Then, that was in France, I discovered that the French culture was another box. You know, they, they told me, no, you cannot do that. Why? Because ça ne se fait pas. You're not supposed to do it. Who say that? Well, ça ne se fait pas. They never told me who say that. They just told me ça ne se fait pas. Well, guess what? That's what I want to do with ça ne se fait pas, right? Let's do it. <laughs> so they say, you're crazy. I say with a smile, yes. Yes, I'm crazy. And I'm happy to be crazy. And today, I would like to tell you about what I call the wisdom of madness. The problem with most of you is that you're not crazy enough. You just stay where you are. You're happy with what you're doing every day. You need more discomfort. You need more bones. You need more crisis. I know it sounds crazy what I'm saying. Well, but you know, I told you already, I'm crazy, so this is fine, right? And well, at the very beginning, I was going to the movies. You know, the big screen on the back, and you know, and I was looking at these people on the horses, you know, Gary Cooper, horses going west, cowboys, Indians. And I say, 
you know, one day I want to be on my horse in California, going, riding toward the sunset. It was like a dream. I was a little boy. And people told me, hey, you're never going to make it. Why don't you shut up, stay where you are, just do your homework, and, you know, let's be fine. I never gave up my dream. Never. So I said, I'm going to become an American. Say, it's impossible. It's too complicated. Visa, and, you know, you need to have a permit. You need to cross the Atlantic. You need to have money, you know. Say, I don't care. I'm going to do it. What is going on? Why do we have in the United States 15 million illegal immigrants? Because it's a magnet, something that attracts people. And I was one of them. I wanted to become an American. Why is that? Because I wanted unlimited possibilities. I don't want people to tell me you cannot do it. You know, Obama was elected because he did follow what I call the app code. Yes, you can. Wow. Yes, you can. You know, this is a dream. It's not realistic. Who cares about reality? I know some people do, but I don't want to offend them. <laughs> but I don't care about reality because I transform reality. I make it my reality. And so I went to America, arrived there. I had no money. Uh, there was a time where uh, you know, Mitterrand became president of France. I could not even take my credit card. And I arrived in New York City. And I said, I'm going to make it there. You remember the song? If you can make, can make it there, you can make it anywhere. You know, I know it was tough. I was tough. So I was sleeping in a sleeping bag at a friend's home. And by the way, the guy was French. Now, when you are in France, the French are always pity and jealous and they say, no, you can, no, you cannot do it, no, you cannot do it, you're never going to do it. They always resent everything. They tell you you cannot do it. This guy, he was already on the other side of the Atlantic. He was already up. And he told me, yes, you can. Do uh, you want a car? Do you want a home? Do you want to meet some friends? I say, hey, are you French? I mean, it's just like it didn't fit my code here, right? And so I succeeded, and I was able to go up and today, I'm very comfortable and very successful in the United States. When uh, Monsieur Romer, Dr. Romer, came to my home, he said, I like your house, but why do you have an American flag behind your desk? I say, well, I choose to become an American. I'm proud to be an American. That's my culture, that's my values. And what are these values I want to share with you? Never give up. Never give up. Try again. Try again. Again. You fail, you try again. Remember Thomas Edison, how many times he failed? Never give up. Try again. They say, no, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. You have to be crazy at a certain time. This is what I call the wisdom of madness there. And then you'd be surprised that after a while, the other guys, they get tired. They just get tired of telling you not, you can, okay, you can, okay, well, and you do it. So this is very important here. I want to give you a recipe, a way to go up. And this way to go up is what I call the app GPS. You know about global positioning system. You need to have your own app GPS, every one of you, right? So how does a GPS work? First, before you can move, you need to know where you are, exactly, precisely where you are. Who are you today? What can you do? How many languages do you speak? How many musical instruments do you play? Okay, this is where you are today, and you need to know exactly where you are. Second, you need to know where you want to go. I wanted to be on my horse in California, riding toward the sunset. That was my goal. Always keep the goal in mind, right? So you program, here I am, here where I want to go, right? Then, step by step, you start moving in this direction. Now, what is very important about what I call the up GPS philosophy? You make the wrong turn. You make the wrong turn. 
Your GPS never tells you, hey, you bastard, you never listened to me. I told you not to do that. You should not. Never happen. So what the GPS does is recalculating. I want this word to be your motto in life every day. Recalculating. Don't look backward. Who cares? The past doesn't exist. I know you're not going to say it's crazy. Of course, the past exists. No, sorry. The past doesn't exist. I was trained as a psychiatrist and as a psychoanalyst. Analyst. And I can tell you the problem with most of the people is that they create their past and they always create the wrong past. Change it. You know, I, I was teaching at Michigan State University and my students say, you know, I'm, you know this is... Your theory is interesting, but you know, how can we make it work? I said, okay, we're going to buy an album, a family album, and you're going to go with all the magazine, and I want you to cut down and choose your father. What do you mean, my father? Yeah, you know, oh, I like this guy, he's a pilot, he's a nice guy, he has a nice uniform, a lot of medals, da -da -da -da. and you write father, okay? Now, choose the mother. Whoa, this one, I, I take this one. <laughs> okay, mother, you want, you want, uh, uh, Brothers and sisters, oh yes, five brothers, okay. where do you live? Oh, well, I live in uh, Washington, Washington DC, okay, Washington DC. And that's it, you know, and, and you start getting all the stories here, okay. And then, there was vacation time, you take a plane, and there is a guy next to you and say, uh, where are you from? Where I'm from? Uh, Washington. They believe you. What is your father doing? He's a pilot. Oh, they believe you. So why do you want to tell them things that you don't like? When the things you like, they like it too. <laughs> there is no limit to what you can create in life. You know, everything is in your mind. If you want to repeat again and again all the bad things that happened to you, well, that's called masochism, fine. You know, why don't you beat yourself on the head every, all the time at the same time? You know, why not? But if you want to create a new life, just think about you being there already, you know, already the goal in mind. The other day, uh, somebody say, can you help me? I would like to change my life. Oh, interesting. Um, let's suppose I have a magic wand. Magic wand? And I can do everything you want. I can give you anything you want. What do you want? Oh. Oh. Oh, I didn't get anything. So, so, so you're not going to go anywhere if you don't know what you want to go. <laughs> you know, what is this? It's like taking a plane and not going where you want to go. I mean, this is a very difficult exercise. If you could be anything you want, if you could do anything you want, do you know what you want? Wow. That's frightening, right? And then I'm telling you, be crazy. Don't, don't be reasonable. Just be crazy. As crazy as possible. Now, where do you find the energy to do that? And the energy comes from pressure, pression, huh? pressure. Happy people don't write great poetry. I'm sorry about that. So I'm not sure I want to be happy. Happy is not my goal. I want to go up. I want to create. I want to be alive. I want movement. I want to change the world. I want to make the world better. I mean, if I was happy, the world would be perfect. The world is not perfect. And so I'm frustrated all the time, right? And so you have the pressure, and then there is repression, 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 you know? Pressure, repression, right? And repression is no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't. Right? And so what is the result after so much repression? Well, it's called depression. You go to Prozac, alcohol, look at the Russian. They are the number one expert in vodka. Woo. Vodka is the solution. Vodka is their future. Vodka, vodka, vodka. Boom. You know, the, Zar the Zarin, Russian Zarin says it's a lot better to run a country where everybody is drunk than a country where everybody starts thinking. This is bad. Thinking is good. Drunk is good. You know, right? And so, there is this notion here that is very important that you want to express. You know, pressure, pressure, repression, depression. How to avoid depression? Express. Put pressure outside, express yourself, anything. I went to see my master, Salvador Dali, great guy. 
And I loved him. I wrote a book about him called Wisdom of Madness. Wisdom of Madness. There is wisdom in madness. And you have to reconnect with your madness. What is madness? Not to be normal. I don't want to be normal. Do you know the norm? Everybody doing the same thing? Who cares? You know? I don't want to be normal. But is that a goal in life? It's terrible. The normal people are really the ones that are insane. A lot of people around here are dead. We just forgot to tell them. But they're already dead. But just nobody told them you're dead, right? I don't want to deal with dead people. I want to be people that are frustrated, that are creative, they want to go ahead. And so I want to give you a map. I gave you a tool, the GPS. I gave you an attitude, recalculating, not blaming. Don't, pay, don't spend time blaming other people. Who cares? Just go to the future, right? We have four worlds. Maybe you're not very familiar with that, but I want to share that with you. And I want to give you that new glasses for you to listen to everybody that's going to speak. And I know they're going to hate me when I'm going to say that, but try to think in which world they are. Are they in the first world, the second world, the third, or the fourth? So let's go to the first world, very simple. I call that the world of vegetables. Vegetables? You know, people that get up in the morning, drink coffee, and they get some food to have some energy, then they go to work, to make money, to buy for the food, and then at night they, they're tired, they go back to bed, and then they wake up in the morning, get some coffee, get some food, go to work, make money, and that's their life. They are veget vegetables, nice plants, right? They're happy. To be happy, you have to be dumb. Don't think, just keep doing it, no question. Now, then I can give you my side of the vision, the vision as the psychiatrist. The big problem starts when people start asking why. Why do I have to do that? Why can I do that? Why? And that the, when you ask why, boom, you move to the second world. Now you are in deep trouble. Why? Because there is no answer to this why. Right? So I love my children and I want them to go, but I don't want them to go. I want them to say, but I want them to go, but I want them to say, but I want them to go. Oh, why? So this is the world of contradiction. This is the world of Prozac. That's what you need vodka or you need drugs. Anything to say, because there is no answer to that you know, question that people ask you. I know there are a lot of statistics, a lot of numbers, and everything that tells you, well, you know, it's easy. But this is completely irrelevant, because you have a tension here, and there is no answers to that. So my, what is my advice when people are at this second world? Become crazy. Don't give up. There are things that you want and people tell you it's impossible, don't give up. Go for it, go for it. Keep fighting, keep fighting. And this is when you start really being different from the others. And then you start going into the third world. And the third world is everything is three. Everything is right and wrong and both at the same time. Wow. Let's make three, at least, sometime more. I love you and I hate you, and both at the same time. Oh, really? Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, mothers will tell me I love my children. Oh, I could kill them today. I love them. Oh, I could kill them today. You love them, you could kill them. Well, if you are a mother, you know what I'm speaking about, right? But suddenly you realize that everything is three. There is always three dimension there. And it's very interesting because sometimes I'm walking around looking at people and I meet very few people that are in the third world. You know, think about that. People tell me, oh, Dr. Apai, you wrote 14 books. You're very intelligent. So this guy is in the second world. Why? If he was in the third world, he would know that the more intelligent I am, the more dumb I am. And both at the same time. Wow. When I practice martial art to try to understand the Japanese culture, they tell me at a certain time, you have to give up, give up to win. 
And I remember I applied that. I was in Newark, New Jersey, working on a court employment project with criminals. And my Zen master told me one day, when you approach a fight, if you're dead already, they cannot kill you. Think about that. If you're dead already. So I was in the street and a guy came with a knife and said, I'm going to kill you. I say, please do, I'm dead already. What? I say, yeah, please, please do, I'm dead already. I don't, no problem. Sure, go on, my brother. Uh, he, he ran away like, you know, uh, like a mad dog, couldn't understand what was going on. And so at a certain time, when you both at the same time, and then there is a fourth world. And when you are in the fourth world, you cannot explain it with words. You have the freedom to be at all these different levels. And so my advice today, tonight, for you, today or tonight, I don't know, it's dark here. You have to find an app master, somebody that is going to help you to go from one world to another to another. You need an app master, somebody that is going to help you to go from your contradiction to the world of three. And how you do that? By respecting the app code, always going up, always going up. And you have to think about you personally as a person, what can you do to go up? Do you have to go for another culture, which is the app culture? I'm not sure the Mexican culture is the best app culture you can find. I'm not sure the French culture is the best culture you can find to go up, you know, for sure. Right? So what are the cultures in the world where things are going up? I'm going to be Tuesday in Seoul, Korea. Watch the South Korean. They're great. They're going up. And, you know, and I love them, of course, because they love me. I sold 200,000 copies of my books in Korea. I have no idea why. I don't know why. That's why I'm going. I want to find out. And so there is this notion that you have a program coming from a culture that tells you, no, you cannot go up. You have to deprogram yourself. You choose your program. You choose your past. You choose your history. You choose your family. You choose. Make your choices. And find an app master that will help you to do that. And Dr. Romer and myself, we're writing a book called the Ere Quadrada R2. Huh? which is a Rapai Romer Index, and it's going to be the first app index. We're giving you a guide, a way to go up all the time. Never give up. Always go up. Find an app master, and you can transform not only your life. You know, be the change you want to see in your life. I'm sure you know who say that. Huh? Be the change you want to see in the world, right? So be it. And I just want to end with a very simple word, yes, you can. Thank you.